Welcome back to the table, everyone. We're going to finish up, well, I won't really finish, but we're going to start turn three of our MBT game. Now, we left off where quite a bit of combat was happening down in this. This is the southern section of the map. We had a strong platoon of T-80s come up, and they were just decimated by defending fire from the Abrams unit. The Abrams lost one, but the Soviets lost three. And then a reinforcing platoon of Soviet T-80s have come up to help try and push through. Then up north, with our movable mobile camera, with our reporter on the spot, we'll move the camera up there. They've got T-80s that were, or not T-80s, but Abram, blah, 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 M1 Abrams that were moving up the road trying to capture the bridge here near the town. And then some T-80s actually got the initiative and were able to occupy the bridge. So the Americans simply decided to back up into woods to give themselves some cover from the fire that they're pretty much going to receive. So you've got a platoon of three T-80s here and then a platoon. This is five. This was the big platoon. So five up in here in the north. So hopefully the Americans' plan is going to be just to destroy all the T-80s they can, to capture the bridge here, and then maintain control of the bridge here in the south. The Soviets, on the other hand, is the same game plan. They're going to destroy as many Abrams as they can, control the bridge here, and then they want to capture the bridge in the south. And that's going to require destroying tanks. Now, we've done one round of combat and with the particular vehicles involved, what we've learned is any, any shot is going to penetrate and cause a brew up because these, these hit hard. Well, actually, let me double check on the brew up because the Soviet actually had a penetration difference of nine. So actually, it might not be brewed up. It might have just been knocked out. Uh, yeah, if it's greater than four, so you have to get a greater than ten for a brew up. So technically, if I'm going to fix this, that is not a brew up. That is just a knockout. What's the difference, you might ask? Well, that's a good question. Where's my knocked out? Is it on the back side here? Yes. The difference is knocked out tanks don't create smoke in the hex, which would create firing penalties for into and out of the hex. Whereas brew up, which is what this group is experiencing, it does. So when they shoot out, they're going to be a little bit of a penalty, but they get a little bit of protection because we got to shoot through smoke. If we had advanced rules, we'd be worried about thermal imaging and things like that, but we're not doing advanced rules, so we're just going to take a smoke, brew up smoke penalty. Now, here, the reason why that's semi-bad for the Americans is that they're not going to get that benefit of brew-up smoke for defense because a knockout tank, again, doesn't generate smoke. So they're going to have to really, really get lucky on their shots. And uh, if they win initiative, they can destroy all of the oncoming T-80s. So that's the first thing we're going to do then is issue orders. So what we have is uh, the Soviets are going to issue fire orders. So they're going to go, they're going to fire, they're going to fire. The Americans, we are all in position to where we're just going to fire. So I'm going to lay these up north. You can't see them yet. Now, in the phase of things, you would check for spotting. We're all in the open. We've all been firing and moving. So the spot ranges go really far. There is a spot table, but one of the rules is that if it's kind of obvious that people were firing and moving, you don't have to mark them. And it's pretty obvious we've been moving and firing. And so with regular spotting, um, range, yeah, this is like the range. Uh, yeah, if I remember right. Spot removal. That's like your spotting range, right? I don't quite remember that now off the top of my head how the spotting. Because that's like pretty far ranges that they can see to try and spot stuff. If it's 60 40, you know, that range one or auto spotted, uh, half spotting range. 
There's some penalties to that. Oh, here it is, spotting ranges. I was trying to think, what was the bonuses here? Uh, the spotting ranges, this is what I'm looking for here. So with this basic spotting, uh, you're going to look to see what modifiers there are to, like if you see stuff. So like my Abrams unit moved into medium cover. So it'd be a minus two on the spotting, which means a vehicle can be spotted seven hexes away, which is still in range of the Soviets up there. So again, just the fact that everybody was moving, because moving gives a modifier to that. So if we find moving, spot moved, adds plus two, so that negates the medium cover that they just moved into. So yeah, pretty much we just skip the spotting phase. Now if I was playing with a face-to-face -face opponent and we were had maybe a lot more units involved, I'd be more concerned about spotting ranges and seeing. But just as the basic game goes and how close we now are, because there's modifiers like for the brew up, the brew up makes it easier to see because you know it's illuminating the, the other tanks in the area. So we're close enough that we can see everything. So we're just gonna issue the orders we go to initiative now, now that we've issued the orders. Now the only thing that spotting is important for in this case would be in the base game is just to see if things are in line of sight. Well everything here is in line of sight and we are pretty much all within point blank range of each other. So we're going to go to initiative. So I'm going to bring the initiative box here, dice tower. Blue for NATO, red for Warsaw. Blue gets it. Wow, so they, in a way, have, uh, this is fantastic. Why is that fantastic? Because again, we've already learned that with no other modifiers, it's a 90% chance to hit, and every hit is a kill shot of some type. So that's great. So what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna lay out the tanks again. I don't think I removed the knocked out tank from this group. I did not, because we only had nine Americans. There's five up here, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, so one of the Abrams comes out of the stack. And so we only got three shots. Now we had to really consider this because I've got three in this stack and one lone over here. So we're gonna use these three to shoot the three in this stack. And we're gonna do the same thing, just straight across. one one tank shooting uh, each target. And because we don't have the brew up smoke to worry about, we have no mod, there's no modifiers. Where can I put this so you can see the dice rolls? Right here, I'll stick it on top of that tank. So with this here, uh, NATO minus two at point blank, there's a 72% chance to hit. All right, let's do it. 72%. And he rolled a 51. And again, because his armor is uh, penetrates 108 and the Abrams is 100, that's a difference of 8. That's a knockout and not a brew up. So that's one more American tank down. Okay, so we'll just restack that. And that would be the end of that. So we would, well, oh, I guess we'll get one more turn. So this would be turns four and five. So we'll go fire, fire. We pick up all the not needed. The brew ups and the knockouts stay there. I don't remember if it's in the advanced rule, if it's in the advanced rules at all. I think there might be a point where you would check to see if the brew up vehicles stop burning and smoking, but that's not in the basic game. So that's gonna, those brew ups will be there the whole time. But I do believe later on you'll have a rule where you can check to see if the burning stops. That's cool. I like that. But for now we've got brew up columns of smoke coming up. All right. So we would then check for spotting. They're spotted. We, we see them. So now we're going to issue commands. So again, I could have everybody shooting into this one hex, but in order to satisfy the victory conditions to win. I'm going to issue a move order to the Abrams up north because they're going to move onto the bridge to occupy it and they can shoot out of that bridge. No, their movement will be blocked. But 
we'll, we'll cover that here in a second. Then we're going to put fire on the remaining Abrams here. You know what we will do? I take it back. I'm going to have one Abrams tank on a move order, and then the rest of the platoon is going to be on a fire order to fire south. And we're going to do everything we can to put full firepower, maximum firepower. Better yet, let's do a short halt. I'll show you why here in just a second. Let me find my short halt command or moving fire command. I got one in here. Wait, where's the... Here it is. Yeah, they're going to move. Well, they're going to fire, then move. So they're going to go with a short halt. He's going to be with a move. I just placed them. You can't see it. You're not supposed to, but they're getting a secret fire command. And this one lonely T-80, instead of reversing gears and leaving, they're going to be brave and march on. And what they're going to do, they're at point blank. They can't get... All right, thanks for hanging around for the after action. So that, that was a, a bloodbath. It really was. And I honestly feel that that just simply came down to a matter of who had initiative. But that really kind of shows a difference between Panzer and MBT just off that little bit for me there. With Panzer, it felt like there were opportunities to actually shoot stuff and you might not get penetrations. You actually had to do more maneuvering to get to the sides. Here, this modern weaponry just blows through things. So I thought I would take a look at the T-72 and the M60A3, which is what the scenario originally called for, to see if there would have possibly been a difference in play. And the only difference is, is the M60A3 has a lot less armor than the Abrams. And so the return shots for the T-72s, if they hit, would have also been brew-ups. So we would have had brew-ups both ways. And the point-blank ranges are the same. So as soon as these folks get close to each other, it's deadly. You're not missing. So a couple of things to take away from that is, one, do you need to get close? The only thing is when you're looking at the map, you're, you're thinking about maneuvering, such as there's trees in the way. And if I was playing a second time and maybe playing with a human opponent, I might consider keeping range and then going up on the hilltops to try and shoot down over blocking terrain. So instead of worrying about staying on the ground and just maneuvering around, I would might want to work on keeping range. And I'm going to look up that rule for the NATO gunnery bonus because, again, if I was playing with somebody, or again, I might want to keep range and take advantage of that plus one NATO targeting bonus to compensate for range. So this could play out completely different next time. So, I mean, I, that's pretty good. But as just a beginning scenario to learn how to move and shoot, yeah, that is just absolutely devastating. And I think really does show that, yeah, these modern tanks, they they pack a punch. And and I think it does kind of make it hard to, to say that, um, you know, the Soviet equipment is horrible. I know when you look at Gulf War, let me find an M1A1, because I think the M1A1 was the the chariot of choice for the Americans at the time. Now the armor isn't that much more. I got data cards everywhere. Let me just see if I've got the... I was just looking at an M1A1. Oh, it's on the back of the M1. Okay, so the... Well, that's the IP. Uh, it's on the back of the M60. So the M1A1's front armor is 105. Well, see, it's not even that much more. But the gunnery penetration value is 136. That's, that's going to penetrate everything. And I think, without digging through all the data cards, I think the strongest tank for the Soviets in this game is the T-80U. And it's got a front armor of 110. So even if you played with the strongest tanks from both sides, it's going to be brew up. So let me, let me see the reverse, the T-80U versus the M1A1. The TADU penetration value at point blank is 116, and the M1 Abrams has um, front armor of 105. So they both, oh, 
the T80U actually has a slightly better armor value, but it's going to penetrate, and it's going to be, um, it's going to be a brew up. Now, if you now I will say this though, if you switch to the advanced rules, there would be some differences. I'm I don't have the plates to show you. I move the camera so you can look at my beautiful face, but. Um, Rising shots against an Abrams gives a front armor of 118, and then that would not be a penetration. So again, the basic rules, yeah, super, super devastating. So if I had one recommendation for somebody, it would be move into, at least read the advanced rules on the damage and the armor chart, and then when you play, really think about keeping distance, because as you keep distance, the odds of hitting drop. Right. Remember, these folks, they just moved like right across the street from each other. There was like no way they could miss. And the results of that were infinitely you know, more deadly than, than I would have imagined at first. I don't remember it being like that in Panzer. I think Panzer had a lot of shots that were misses and a lot of shots that were bouncing off of armor, which kind of had that effect. But again, kind of going back to the idea of the Gulf War, they had 